high chess masters and future chess masters. This is National Master Coach Ba. Today I'm going to show you how to crash Karakhan defense. After white plays e4, black responds c6. This is Karakhan defense. And in this position, the main line is to play d4, but I'm going to show you another way to play in this position with knight c3. Because this line contains a lot of traps. After black plays d5, here we're not taking it, we're not advancing forward, or we're not advancing the pawn, we play knight f3. After knight f3 move, usually black has three uh, ways to play. He can play d4, he can play capture, or he can play bishop to g4. Let's go over first d4. This d4 move is very tempting, but it's also inaccuracy because the pawn on d4 might be very vulnerable. So white plays here knight to e2, defending knight by uh, moving away and plus attacking on d4. Now, if, if black plays c5, white will continue with th c3. If they play here d3, that would be a mistake because white will play here knight to f4, attacking on d3 with knight and bishop. And after they defend with c4, white will have here fork by playing queen to a4. Notice queen is attacking the king and end the pawn on c4. So black is going to win both black pawns on c4 and d3. Let's go back. If in this position, if black will take it, then white will take it back with knight. So this position already better for white because white is uh, leading in development since black wasted uh, some you know moves with the same pawn, with the pawn. So here uh, game might continue with, uh, for example, they can play knight c6, then white will play bishop to b5, then let's say e6, and we play here d4. So after take, knight takes. So we have something like uh, Sicilian defense, but with a lot of extra moves for white. So it's definitely better for white. So the, the, this d4 line is, is not good for black. Okay, so that's that's also considered as a, one of the traps. So it's very tempting for black to play this d4, which is a mistake. Okay, now let's go over another li line where black will take on e4 with pawn. After they will take, we're going to take it back with knight on e4. So it's very common in uh, Karakhan defense to take on e4 with a pawn here and then play the bishop to f5. Okay, so this is very common to play in Karakhan defense. And therefore, black might do this the same thing like in, in other variations, and he can play bishop f5, for example, uh, bishop f5 here. Now in this position, the problem is uh, with bishop f5 move is that white can now retreat the e4 knight and go to g3 and attack this uh, bishop, okay? So in in a, other lines where um, we have almost same position was a pawn on d4, but the knight on g1. So that's the one of the main line Karakhan defense. But here white has advantage uh, because uh, knight on f3 is more useful right now. And this um, bishop f5 is going to be not correct move. For example, in this position, the bishop is in danger. He has two ways to retreat, to g4, or g6. If he goes to g4, so it's considered as a, like almost wasting time because he moved the bishop to f5. Now he go, he's going to play on g4, which you could do in one move. Then here white is going to play bishop to c4, developing bishop and setting up a trap. So that's another trap. Now the trap is if they play, for example, knight f6. So here white has very uh, common sacrifice the bishop on uh, f7. Check. And after king takes, we play knight to e5. So that's a fork, attacking king and bishop. And plus, we are doing this code attack. So uh, we're aiming at this bishop twice with knight and bishop. So let's say king goes back. We take, knight takes, queen takes. This is obviously better for white since white uh, is winning by a pawn. And plus, the black king moved twice, so he can't castle this game. So let's move back and um, go back if bishop goes to g6. If the bishop goes to g6, in this position we have a very nice idea for white uh, h4. So this is again very typical in Karakhan defense. The idea of this move is to trap the bishop on g6. So white is threatening to play h5. Now here black can play uh, h6 or you can play h5 or you can just ignore by playing knight f6. So let's go over first h5 move. If he goes to h5, this is considered as a mistake because um, white then played knight to e5, attacking bishop, 
on g6. So notice also when knight is attacking bishop, this queen is aiming at the pawn on h5. So with knight and queen, we are attacking on uh, h5 pawn. So queen uh, moving the bishop back to h7 is obviously bad because uh, queen here can just take the pawn on h5. So black will probably play here queen to d6, d6 trying to defend the bishop with queen, attack the knight on um, e5, and white will play d4 move, defending. So knight to d7, trying to exchange knights. Knight takes, queen takes, and here we play bishop to g5. So it's a very interesting move. So trying to trap the queen, we're uh, attacking some squares here. And for example, in this position, if they play normal looking move knight of six, that's a big mistake because now white will play knight bishop to d3 and black queen is trapped. So that's why the h5 move also doesn't, doesn't look good. So if they play um, here knight f6, then we play here h5, advance forward, bishop goes to e4, that's the only safe square for the bishop, we take, knight takes, then in this position we here play queen to e2, aiming at this knight. So knight goes back to f6, we play h6 move here, very interesting move, trying to uh, break through here black's king side, so create some pawn weaknesses or some weak, weak squares, and after g6, we play here d4, so here white has obviously advantage, like space advantage, and also advantage development, I think, because um, right now black is trying to develop the bishop and castle to queen side, when black still have a problem with castling and developing the dark square bishop. So let's go back, and let's see what if black plays h6. Okay, so h6 is, I think it, it looks normal. After h6, in this position, we play knight to e5, right? So knight to e5. That's the problem. If um, in other lines of Karakhan defense, instead of knight on f3, we uh, white usually have a pawn on d4. That means that uh, white doesn't have knight e5 move, so knight's still on g1 in that case. So that's why... Um, here, black is in trouble, the bishop again is in danger, and if they play bishop h7, trying to, uh, black is trying to save the bishop, of course it's not good for black to exchange the bishop for a knight, so that's why they go to h7. Now white will play here queen h5, it's a very nice provoking move, so he's provoking black to play g6, which will create some weaknesses again and also will block the bishop, for example. So, But this is the only way to protect f7. Now here, white has very nice intermediate move, bishop to c4. So he's developing bishop and threatening mate in one before he's uh, defending his queen. So mate in one on f7. So the only defense is to play e6. And after they play e6, now queen goes to e2. Okay, so here's the trap. Um, white is waiting for black to play Knight f6, or bishop e7, or bishop g7, so all looks very normal, but all of them it leads to the same tactic here, combination here. For example, if they play knight f6, white is going to sacrifice the knight on f7. So by taking the pawn on f7, white is uh, doing the scout attack on f uh, e6 with queen, and also he removed one of the defenders um, of e6 pawn. So if king takes, now we take with queen, check, that will lead to checkmate. So king goes to g7, queen f7, checkmate. If they play here uh, knight, sorry, bishop e7, then we still take on f7, takes, we capture on e6 check, and king goes to e8. Now in this position, doing this check on f7 is not going to help because king can here retreat to d7. So the best move in this position would be uh, playing knight to e4, okay? So by playing the knight to e4, we are stopping black knight uh, going to f6 because in that case we just take it and the black bishop cannot take it back since it's pinned, right? So knight e6. And if they offer a queen trade like this, queen e7, then white will just go back to queen e5, aiming at this rook. And again, um, knight f6 is bad because once they play, we will just take it. Bishop cannot take, it's pinned. And if they don't take, uh, play the knight f6, then how to defend this rook on h8? So that's why... This is too bad for black. So this position is bad for black. Now let's go back to back to starting position. So in this position, we already reviewed d4. We did 
pawn takes on e4. Now let's see bishop goes to g4. I think this is the uh, one of the main line in this uh, variation, and it looks like this is the best way for, uh, best response for uh, from black. So in this position here, uh, white can play h3 usually, but I'm going to show you another way, a very interesting way for white to continue here with um, d4. We're going to play here d4. So this move leads to pawn sacrifice. The white is trying to sacrifice pawn on d4 for a fast development. So for example, here white, oh, sorry, black takes pawn on e4, knight takes on e4. And now in this position, black accepts the sacrifice pawn on d4 and captures on f3. But he needs to give up the his uh, very important bishop for a knight. So if he doesn't do that, he doesn't have to accept it. He can also play, for example, knight to d7. In that case, white will play h3, bishop h5, the knight goes to g3, and then bishop goes to g6, and white will play bishop to d3. So here, white has slightly better position because because of development. So we see black waste, wasted three moves, bishop g4, then h5, then g6. That's why here, white is better. Okay. So let's go back and let's see what happens if they accept. If they capture on f3, queen will take on f3. Now, white will take on d4. So that's the that was the sacrifice. After he captures here, white will play bishop e3. Developing another piece was attack, attacking the queen. So queen captures another pawn. So white actually sacrificed already two pawns, right? And the rook is in danger. So white will continue with bishop to c4. It's a very nice move, sacrificing two rooks. Because after white, black will take the rook on a1. Now it's going to be a skewer. And white is going to sacrifice another queen, another rook. Because white is aiming at um, f7. So there's a, there's, there's a very strong attack against the king. So if they will capture on a1, then white will just go king e2. So that there is no any more checks, and if queen takes uh, the rook because queen was in danger, why will just take on f7 and check? King goes d8, captures on f8, check. Let's say king goes to he can go to d7, he can go to c7. Let's go to d7. Then we go knight to c5, check. So we're bringing the pieces closer to the king and checking the king. Now if he goes king c7, we are going to play here knight e6, check. Okay, the king can't go to queen side because we have bishop. So king will go to d6. Then we add another check with bishop from f4. King goes to d7. And queen goes to d8, checkmate. So accepting the rooks are uh, really bad for black. Here, if he doesn't take and if he goes knight f6, trying to defend his f7 pawn. And white does here uh, just castle. He castles in order to protect the rooks. And now he's trying to bring the rooks to the open file to b1, to d1, and um, white is going to have very strong attack. Now, if black will take the pawn on c2, which is, I think, uh, it's too greedy for, uh, from black side because he's capturing another third pawn while his piece is not developed, king in the, in the middle of the board, white has a very quiet but very strong move here, uh, queen f5. Queen f5 will um, threaten mate in one move on c8, so we want to go queen to c8, that's checkmate. And also, white is threatening to do the scout attack by moon knight to f6, right, or d6. That will be check, and queen just will pick up the queen. So too much threats, that's why they have to probably play king d8. And white will just continue with rook to d1, and this is this is very strong attack against the, uh, this is strong attack against the black king. So too bad position for black. So let's go back. There was one more line here. In this position, uh, after white, after black will take, we take here uh, another line that black doesn't have to play bishop f5, and he might continue here with knight d7 move. So this is also one of the uh, very common move in uh, Karakhan defense, knight d7, before he plays knight f6, another knight goes to f6. The reason he goes... Uh, Knight d7 first because he wants to protect the uh, knight on f6. He doesn't want to have uh, double pawns. So here we are going to continue with um, bishop to c4. Bishop goes to c4. Developing bishop and aiming at on um, 
f7 pawn. If they go knight to f6, we are going to play knight to g5, attacking on e6. e6, sorry, f7. And if they play e6, we here play queen to e2. So this is a trap. So it's a very common uh, in Karakhan defense to bring the bishop here and queen here in order to attack on e6. But this e6 pawn so far protected by the another pawn on f7. So white is planning to capture f7 first and take on um, e6. For example, if they play bishop something like bishop e7, we can already sacrifice on f7. So if king takes, we can capture here with queen. So check, the bishop is protecting. If, for example, they will play here um, king back, then it's obviously made on f7. If king will go to g6, well, this is... This is too bad because um, once the king is out of his uh, shelter, then uh, it's very easy to checkmate. So queen f7 check, and uh, if king goes to g6, we have like d4 move opening up another bishop. The king is trapped, they have to block, then bishop takes, and that, that's going to lead to checkmate. And if they play king to uh, here, we can uh, continue our attack with, um, there is a lot of ways for, for white to continue here. Bishop d3 we have. Bishop e6 we have, so the the so white is just trying to bring the king even more closer to white pieces to make it easier to attack. Here we have again d4 check was bishop right. So actually this is uh, almost made. He moves here and so yeah, so it's winning for white. There's no no question about that. Let's go back go back in this position white can continue here black can continue here with knight to b6 knight goes to b6 developing knight attacking bishop on c4 and plus the bishop on c8 now is guarding on e6 so the knight takes f7 move is not going to work now but white has a very nice uh idea here knight to e5 so two knights on e5 so this is very unusual situation with two knights aiming at f7 just in the middle like in the beginning of the game and there is no you know good defense there is no defense uh, against losing pawn on f7 so if they take we take it with queen okay we still keep the knight on e5 if they play queen d5 or for queen trade so defending side always tries to trade off the queens then we just take we can take the queen and after one of the pawns take doesn't matter which one we will grab the pawn on f7 so this is how we win the pawn right uh, in the beginning of the game, rook, rook g8, and we can just castle here. So white has um, extra pawn and plus, I think uh, his piece is better placed. So we don't need to worry about this h6 move, trying to chase this knight away and take this because we have uh, intermediate check with rook from e1. So trying to chase this king away so that king is no more attacking on f7. If they play uh, bishop e7, then, well, at least we have knight to d6 check, and then take the bishop on c8. So white-black doesn't have any compensation for a pawn lost. Okay. So this was a Karakhan defense, how to crash with white. Okay, starting with uh, knight c3, and after d5, we play knight f3. Okay, thank you for watching this video. Bye.